sorry. How's life growing up? Uh, it was a bit of everything. Um, <clears throat> so my dad was one of those people who lost all his money. <laughs> so in primary school, we were very wealthy. You know, like we're wealthy, wealthy, um, doing very well and everything. And my dad lost all his money. And he went from here all the way here. Um, so from secondary school, it was, it was a struggle somewhat. Um, I was in Federal Government Girls College. Um, and because we were, there were three of us in Federal Government Schools at that time, it was a struggle to pay the fees at the same time. I know we all resume at, on the same day or a week apart. So from then, I'd already began to think how I could help my dad. Um, so I'll tell him, you know what, pay for this. And, and I'm, I was the youngest of the three of us. Uh, my younger brother was still in primary school. So of the three older ones, I was the youngest. But I'm like, pay for the other two. I would go into school. So I'd study the school system to see that if you were going in with your luggage, you'd be stopped to be searched. So I'll leave my luggage at the gates. My guy must go back. And I'll stroll into school and play. So when the checkers close at 6 p.m., I'll go with my friends to the gates and bring my bag in. So I bought, I buy my father till meet him. Because when I come back from meet him, they'll search us again and ask for a receipt. Um, so I always used to buy him um, time. And then um, I looked again, what's the issue they have in school that I can use to make money? I realized that Jebu Gari was a thing, a rare thing in Benin. They had a lot of yellow Gari. Um, and I hear it was expensive to buy Jebu Gari from Airport Road. So I come with a con trailer load of Jebu Gari and I exchange. So I had empty tins. I gave you a cup of Jebu Gari, gave me three spoons of milk. I'll do Milo. So my tin can have needle milk, pig milk, sugar milk, like all sorts. Um, but yeah, I did what I had to do to, to get by, get by school. Um, and then after a while, I just became like a terrible child. I think <laughs> my, my dad will never admit, uh, but I was just doing everything to be noticed because I think I was frustrated at the point in time. Um, and I was just doing everything wrong. Like anything bad, you find Trisha there, right in the middle, ringleader. Um, and that went on all the way into university before I began to have an understanding of, okay, sit up. Um, so yeah, it was the mix here and there, and then I began to work. I worked secondary school on holidays. I was teaching children lessons. Um, I worked in university. I studied English and literature. Um, I was a part-time broadcaster at ITV in Benin. Um, so I used to present on TV and radio um, to go by. So yes, um, I've always had to fend for myself from, um, from young and because i'm like i just need to get it going so i'm one of those children that i didn't know what i wanted to do in my life um i wanted to be a pharmacist but my chemistry teacher was molesting me so i stopped going to chemistry classes um and i didn't know what else to do because our pharmacy they said i needed to pass chemistry and physics so they invited my dad and said i needed to move to commercial class I didn't even know anything, like, what do they do in commercial class? <laughs> so I did a switch SS2 third term, which was, like, close to writing exams. Um, and then my father's dream of me becoming a lawyer, I was like, yes, you can be a lawyer. So he threw me into law, jammed in the Me and Ben did not give me law. He gave me English and literature. I think I'm very grateful. Um, so my dad came back again in my 200 level and took me to ride jam. Like, you drive from Lagos to Benin. <laughs> I took me to ride jam. In that second jam, like, for what? My mates will be going to turn a level, and I'll be going to, no. So I taught everybody everything, and I only shaded maybe English. So of course, it was a failure, absolute failure. And I convinced him that, but you know your daughter is brilliant. That it's not my result. Uh, you know, jam. So he believed, and that was how I, Talk about all through. I didn't know what to like. Could I be a teacher? Like I didn't know what I was going to do um, with it. So when everybody had their like their lives figured out, I felt like a failure. Like so, what would I do? Um, so in in camp when I was done with with school in camp, I met a friend. I met somebody. We became friends, and she told me about public relations. And she's like, I think that you thrive. 
in Pierre. I'd never heard about Pierre. You know, so I went and made inquiries. She, she had, I think she had a brochure for, for me. She had a brochure and she showed me, she explained what they do and everything. So while I was done with camp, when we're done with camp and we're posted to our primary uh, place of assignment, I went to look for Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, not maybe, I signed up. So I was doing weekend classes there. Um, and that's how I started my career. So I started with PR and I've, I kept moving. So I realized, oh, in the marketing circle, there's also this, okay, I'll move here. And I kept moving until I went through like what the circle of marketing and advertising.